Anwe Goro, the governor of Kriyaga, and a daughter from the mountain. Excellencies, gov Excellencies governors, Excellencies deputy governors, the Speaker of the Senate, the Right Honorable Amazon Kingi, the men of difficult Kiswahili, the Principal Secretary, State Department of Devolution, Terry Baika, Honorable Sen Senators present, Honorable Members of the National Assembly present, the representatives of constitutional commissions and independent institutions, heads of missions and members of the diplomatic corps, members of the county assemblies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Allow me to read what my team and I have put together and thereafter speak from my heart in a plain and simple language. <laughs> I join you for the eighth devolution conference and the first biennial conference as we celebrate a devolved but complementary system of governance. Over the last four days of this convening, which was opened by President William Ruto on Wednesday, we have appreciated the transformation of investing resources at the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid where they belong. As staunch believers in sparking grassroots economies, we have picked good practices and lessons for better, bolder and broader steps into the next decade of devolution. That is why the sub-theme, driving transformation from the local level, counter governments as a center of economic development is very apt. Governors, distinguished guests, at the start of our administration, President William Ruto was wrongly criticized for being purported to have scrapped off the Ministry of Devolution. This was not the case. It was a case of elevating devolution to the presidency. And in less than one year into office, the president has shown commitment to delivering on the devolution dream because it is aligned to the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. We have no room for a failed devolution because it is the anchor of the Kenya Kwanzaa transformation agenda. We are keeping the promise in our first year in office the national government owes no county a penny. On the other hand, President William Ruto elevated devolution and placed it at the office of the Deputy President, and in this regard, devolution enjoys a direct ear to the presidency. Besides being the chair of the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, I'll be given the role to be the bridge between the national government and the county governments. In short, I am the representative of the devolved units at the decision-making table of the executive. On assuming office, I undertook to eliminate conflict between the two levels of government, and I convened a meeting of all county commissioners and directed them to accord due respect and work closely with elected governors and the county governments. Governors distinguished guests, as a result of that directive, there is seamless cooperation and collaboration between the two levels of government because we serve the same people. There are no Kenyans who belong to the national government and there are no Kenyans who belong to the county government all Kenyans are Kenyans and they belong to the two levels of government. I have repeatedly cautioned the county commissioners and the security commanders that they must respect elected leaders and they must find a way to work with elected leaders. And I have told them repeatedly in their unlikely and unfortunate events that they are unable to work together. Governors are not transferable because they belong to those counties. And if they cannot work together, one must give way. Our plan is not an accident. It 
It is a carefully thought out framework. It is a vehicle carrying the aspirations of counties, inspiring the economy of the grassroots. It is the position of President William Ruto that the bottom-up economic transformation agenda is synonymous with the devolution. Devolution and better are twin sisters, and they all aspire to achieve the same objective. That is why collaboration and partnership, despite the distant nature of the mandates of the national and county governments, are key. We are here to quote, cultivate and oil our mutual working relations for seamless service delivery. The conversation of this conference, therefore, has established that devolution is not a competition, but rather a working in a complementary manner for the benefit of the people of Kenya in the respective 47 counties. Excellencies, governors, distinguished guests, the advent of devolution has led to the rise of health facilities from about 8,000 8, in the year 2013 to over 13,700 to date. While it is in the interest of the counties to adequately provide technical and equipment support, leveraging partnership with the national government ensures quality health service. As we collectively work to implement the universal health coverage, the national government has also given priority to preventive health care to ultimately reduce pressure on the county facilities. Governors and distinguished guests, similarly, when more than 4.5 million people in over 30 counties faced famine recently in the worst drought in 40 years after five failed consecutive seasons, it was out of collaboration between the national government and the county government that no Kenyan died from hunger. As we expect a bumper harvest, counties were key in the last mile delivery of our over 3 million bags of subsidized fertilizer to our farmers in at least 40 devolved units. Such partnership has been crucial in our own illicit brews and drug abuse. We have held forums between the county governments and the national government to deal with this menace. Besides public reforms in the coffee, tea, dairy, and other key subsectors. As President William Ruto said on Wednesday in this very conference, I would like to ask counties to work with us in the registration of farmers and in delivery of phase two of the subsidized fertilizer distribution to the farmer. Excellencies, distinguished guests, from these examples, comparing notes between the national and county governments, it is important in strategic planning and execution of short-term, mid-term, and long-term measures. Long-term measures involve pragmatic approaches to addressing the perennial issues and rebuilding back better in resilience programs under the shared or common functions. Last month, President William Ruto tasked me to represent him at the UN Food System Summit in Rome, Italy. A lesson to pick from the summit was the importance of pooling resources and investing in establishment of structured, self-sustaining food systems. In the face of the climate change threat, which knows no national and county government functions, combined actions and investments in climate smart agriculture with enhance the national food security and protect better the environment. With the inclusion of food trees in the equation of planting 15 billion trees, by the year 2032, we move closer to addressing the negative effect and impact of climate change. While this conference has also listened to the voices of the children, it is also a moment to decide on establishing a long-term framework on the school mail program, with counties having hired over 51,000 ECD teachers. Sustaining growth in enrollment and retention is key. The current school meal program has reduced dropping out of school by 56.5%, while milk alone has increased enrollment by over 50%. Under the self-sustaining food system, the school meal program is a potential economic opportunity in inter-county trade. Already, counties like our hosts we in issue are providing milk to children. This is a source of market for the dairy farmers. 
Our administration has also doubled funds for the school meal program to 5 billion Kenya shillings to cater for about 4 million learners while benefiting our farmers. As more counties embrace the meal, the meal initiative, there is need for a formal framework to expand and extend and sustain the program which touches on our farmers directly. This is the real bottom-up development plan as it will allow counties exchange their products. Excellencies, governors, distinguished guests, intra- and inter-county trade is an essential component now that more than 90% of our counties keep missing own source of revenue collection targets. It is time to strategize and implement better plans of cooking a bigger cake for sharing. This is the ultimate answer to easing the revenue demands from the national government and reducing dependence. While we are empowering the counties to be economic powerhouses, we take note of the vulnerable groups of people amongst ourselves. They include orphans, the elderly, people living with disabilities, among others. They are at a risk of being left behind. The national government is rolling out another registration in September. We seek to partner with the counties in dignifying these special groups as conceived under the Inua Jami program. We invite you to work with us in the registration process. On the other hand, the national government is working hard to securing our nation. As, as a result of our intervention, of telling our security teams that we are not in competition with the county government. A framework has been developed on how we can secure our people. I want to thank governors in the North Rift and Northland Kenya for agreeing to partner with the National Police Service in building houses for National Police Reserve and providing stipends as they work on dealing with insecurity and budgetary. In building stronger security systems, we must continue to work together in aiding terrorism, budgetary, and other threats. Governors, distinguished guests, it is now my duty to declare the Eighth Devolution Conference and the first biennial conference officially closed. Asante Nisan. Maybe Nseme tu Jabumoja. You know, in this country, I am known to speak the truth. And you know, many people have a problem with the truth. Many people. And this new Kenya, we are trying to get everybody to accept the truth as it is. Uh, the unprovoked an unwarranted attack on the U.S. ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman, is as a result of people being allergic to the truth and the reality. <laughs> ambassador Meg Whitman and other ambassadors were at bombers throughout the counting of votes. They had access to the public portal. They had calculators, they are educated, and they have done some bit of mathematics. They added the numbers, they observed, and they were clear that the election was won fair and square, and it was open, democratic, and meets the best international standards. What the ambassador is saying is that is the truth. So she is being attacked and vilified by saying what everybody knows. I want to request leaders to accept the truth and the reality and move on. Life is not static. Life is dynamic. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down, and so on. Again, I want to request our leaders to exercise patriotism to their motherland. President William Ruto inherited a difficult situation I said in Kasarani on the inauguration day on the 13th of September last year, and some people thought I'm mischievous, and they thought probably I'm mannerless to say the truth in front of visitors. And I said the kind of economy we had inherited, and the coffers were empty, and in our stores even rats had disappeared because there was nothing to eat. And the president has embarked 
on a very difficult journey of the economic transformation of this great republic. Along the way, we have found good friends. Ambassador Meg Whitman, in a record time, has increased the volume of trade between Kenya and the United States that, as I speak today, the United States of America is Kenya's largest trading partner in the world. She has taken time to sit with the president, to sit with me, to sit with our cabinet ministers, to unlock business opportunities and to bring investors from America. What she deserves is commendation, not vilification for being truthful. I want to urge Ambassador Meg to ignore the noises and acclimatize to the Kenyan way of doing things. Perennial complaints year after year. She should stay focused and go on with her work. I want to say that we need also to be respectful to our development partners. You cannot speak in a public forum before national television and say that you have the capacity to recall an ambassador from the United States accredited to this country by the American government. It's simply being mischievous. As a private citizen, how would you recall an ambassador? You cannot even transfer an assistant chief in your local supplication. You know, it's part of the, the denial syndrome. You know, you know what was happening during the hardship regime? It's something that happened that, that, happened that nobody can comprehend. That cabinet ministers were being told to go and brief a private citizen on what is happening in government. Principal secretaries were being told to go and brief a private citizen on the workings of government. The CS National Treasury was being told to go and brief a private citizen about the budget. That is why that private citizen thinks he can recall the American ambassador to go back to the country. That situation is over. We have a government in place. Please just take up your right to rule and oversight the government because that is your role. Again, I want to say that the hardship team, after destroying the economy of this country, gave President Ruto no chance because they knew it was almost impossible to turn around the country. In a record one year, President William Ruto, through pragmatic leadership, continuous engagement, agreeing to be advised, having a very competent, competent economic council, has done the unthinkable. In one year, the economy has shown signs of recovery to the extent that for the first time in seven years, all county governments were given their money before the closure of the financial year on June 30th. All members of parliament and the respective constituency development funds in the 290 constituencies were given all the allocation before the closure of the financial year on June 30th. So the people who had skimmed to destroy the economy so that the next leader can fail are very envious. And that is why they are bitter. And that is why they are trying to portray our friends as bad people. What is happening, and I want to invite our brothers to understand, this William Ruto you despised and you gave him no chance. Today, he is the desired visitor of every capital in the world. If he was to honor the invitations to the countries he is being asked to visit, he would be out of this country for 360 days in a year. And that is why people are envious. They thought that the West would not embrace him. They thought that the East would not embrace him. They characterized him as somebody unworthy of leadership. They said he is a thief. They said he is corrupt. They said the bottom-up economic agenda is a farce. In one year, 
He has become the leading light in the African continent. He is being sought by every country in Africa to speak for Africa. So I want to ask our brothers and sisters to just accept and move on. Life is that simple. It is that simple. Again, the president talked about corruption in the county governments and the national government. There is no corruption for the national government and the county governments. Corruption is corruption in its very form. And this government will deal with the corruption in the national government, in the county governments, and in the country. We know that some people are very uncomfortable because previously, governors have been untwisted to give money obtained fraudulently and corruptly to fund political activities. With this new war on corruption in the county government, it is no longer going to be possible to coerce governors from your coalition to give you money for politics. That is a problem. That is a problem. So we understand where they are coming from. We feel you. We feel you. We know you are in a difficult situation. Finally, I want to say we are ready to work with the county government across the political landscape. We don't care in what political formation you are in. And we have told our people, we have told the administration, we have told the police to keep off politics because they are not good at it. It is foolish to use administrators and police in your politics. You will lose. That is how Uru and Raila lost by using chiefs and assistant chiefs and police in politics. We cannot repeat the same mistake. So chiefs, assistant chiefs, county commissioners, OCS, OSPD, they have no business in politics. Their work is to give services to the people of Kenya. Is to fight crime, is to fight illicit brew, is to register farmers, is to espouse government policy and keep up politics. Even governors elected on the opposition platform will enjoy the services of the administrators and the police and everybody else in an equitable and fair manner like the rest of the country. And therefore, let us work together. I am available for consultation with the COG in a structured manner. I'm available to individual governors. You don't need an appointment to come to my office as an elected governor. Anybody who has been elected by 100,000 people is not a joke. That is somebody who needs no appointment to go anywhere. Being 100,000 people who slept in a different home and they have not talked, and they all come to the ballot and decide you are the right person, you are somebody to be respected. So you don't need an appointment to come and talk to us. And those who have come to me, where you have challenges with our administrators, I have taken remedial action, and I will continue to do so. I'm told that uh, when uh, I answered the governor of Migori in alliance, some governors were uncomfortable that uh, I was disrespectful. I wanted to make a clarification. I was not talking about governors. I was talking about every Kenyan who has been denied security for bad behavior. And I will say, when they are of good behavior, we shall review, and we are reviewing. Okay? And it's not just governors. Even presidential candidates, even running mates, even very senior people, former vice presidents, including ministers, everybody who needs to carry a firearm, your temperament must be right. That is the law. What we are saying is, we cannot allow our officers to be in Mandamano because they'll have to fight their fellow officers and it is wrong. We are saying if these Mandamanos require so many officers, we must look for those officers from somewhere. And we start with those who are planning so that uh, they can come and help us to beef up security. But if, uh, <laughs> if these demonstrations are over and there are no issues, you can just get your officers back and continue with the life. That's what we are saying. And I, from what I can see, I think it looks like it's over. So once we are sure it is over, you have your officers back and you carry on with your job. That is all. I, I think we are very fair. We are very fair so that uh, officers are dignified. 
and governors are provided security so that they are able to carry out their work. We only had a problem when we, did, we had a shortage of officers and we needed more officers and the people who are planning were having some of the officers. So we needed to come, get them to come and fight them and then go back. Because it, it's, it's, only, it's only fair because that's the way things are done. So Mimi Nimeshukuru Sana and I really want to thank you. And this devolution must work because the bottom-up economic transformation agenda must work. So the two have a symbiotic relationship. For one to work, the other one must work. So the president and I and the rest of us will support devolution. And it is my commitment, all factors being constant, governors will receive their monthly disbursement on time. But we also want to ask you governors to be fair to us. When these disbursements were late, you are shouting everywhere about it. Why don't you even spare two minutes to say that now you are receiving money on time? So that you tell the people of Kenya, it's already fair. If you are complaining, you did not have to Kenyans. When you get, you have a duty also to inform them that you are, you are getting. To Eshmiane, it's important also to be fair to each other. So, COG Chair, at least I'm happy you have acknowledged that we have given you disbursement on time, and that should continue. And I want to tell you the economy is improving and is doing much better. Even when we come to negotiations next year on the Division of Revenue Bill, I believe we'll have a better conversation. We'll have a better conversation. And when the economy improves, the governors, you are the, the first people to know, because we are will know, because they will feel the impact of an improved economy. And we have no desire to keep money away from you. We'll give you the money when we collect it. And we must collect it from somewhere, and we will collect it from the people of Kenya. So we want governors to support what we are doing to collect more money so that we pass it on to you. It doesn't make sense for any governor in the 47 counties to oppose the finance bill, because the finance bill is about raising money to give you another Kenyans. So if you complain we are collecting money and you still expect money from us, then there is a problem. So mimi ni meshukuru sana kwa kunialika hapa and uh, we look forward to be meeting you from time to time as we continuously engage. Invite me to come now, we launch your projects. That is the docket in my office. And as I said, there are no Kenyans for county governments and there are no Kenyans for the national government. They are the same people. The same people who elected you as governors and senators are the same people who elected President William Ruto and I. We serve the same people. Let us work together, let us collaborate, let us cooperate for the benefit of the people of Kenya. With those very many remarks, Asanteni Sana, Mungu wa Bariki, na wa Bariki Sana.